Okay, so today's problem is a 2003 Ford Windstar, and it's got a misfire, or at least it appears to have a misfire. It uh, runs rough, has had the plugs changed a while ago. So we're going to start out with a scan here to see if we get a specific cylinder misfire detected code. Oh, it does not support. Maybe I don't have the key on it. Two thousand and three Windstar three eight. I believe it's a three eight. Yes, it is. Okay. Let's go to engine and powertrain, automatic with air conditioning. Codes menu, memory codes. Continue. Two lean bank one, two lean bank two, 301, 302, 306. And misfire detected on startup. Two lean on both banks. Let's look at generic functions and onboard diagnostic mode six data and see if it, if it specifies how many misfires it's counted on each cylinder. Misfire monitor, test ID 53. Well, cylinder two shows cylinder two here. I believe this is cylinder two. This is cylinder one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it shows misfires being counted on cylinder two. Data display, misfire data. I don't think that's going to give me the cylinder contribution test, but we're going to try it. Hmm. Now why did I lose communication? That's weird. Let's try the cylinder contribution test. See if it shows which cylinder is misfiring. Here it says number six. You can see the negative numbers here indicate cylinder number six, so we're gonna Check the spark on cylinder number six and maybe disable cylinder number six and make sure that that's the cylinder with the problem. So according to this, cylinder six would be the one closest to the left front wheel. So we're going to install a spark tester on that coil and see if we have spark on that plug wire and see if we have spark there. So I got the number six plug wire off and a spark tester installed on it and doesn't appear to be any significant spark there. I tried threading in this spark tester see if we have any kind of spark at all. So we need a coil pack on this thing for sure, more than likely. No spark at all. 
Oh yeah, there's a very weak spark. So the wires have been replaced, but it needs a coil. I think we should do a relative compression test on this before we put a coil on it too. So I'm looking for the relative compression test here in the Ford or in, in this uh, Snap-on software, and I don't see it. We've got cylinder contribution test, and don't see a relative compression test unless it's a well, it was under functional test. So I'm going to fire up Ford IDS and, and have another look at it. So we got IDS connected to this Windstar. And we're going to have a look at the uh, cylinder contribution test in there and confirm it is number six, like it shows with the snap-on scanner. But this will display it in a much, much nicer, more graphical. Uh, so we're a little bit to load on this ferrous edge. So under powertrain and then our power balance, we'll do the relative compression test after. Start it up. Should be a dip in this one here once it starts to record data. Yeah, definitely number six is not contributing. As I suspected, so we need a coil pack, but let's do a relative compression test on this. Power train, relative compression. In this test, we'll crank it over for 10 seconds, and it'll look at uh, RPM fluctuations during cranking. Hopefully, I can do this without having to. The test will automatically continue when all the above conditions are met. sound of it cranking that it doesn't have a serious or significant compression problem and all cylinders are equal. So we'll change the coil pack on this thing and hopefully that's going to fix the misfire. We'll also have a look at that spark plug although it's been replaced. Okay so we got the coil replaced. I think I'm going to bench test this afterwards but regardless the coil's installed. I cleared the codes I'm going to look at the uh, cylinder contribution test now and see if it still shows a miss. It seems to be running perfectly smooth now. Yeah, cylinder number six is good now. It shows zero. Any negative number here would indicate uh, lack of contribution for that cylinder or a slowdown of the engine when that cylinder was supposed to accelerate. So the misfire is fixed. Now there were the problems of the uh, fault codes related to running lean, so we're going to run it for a little while and look at fuel trims. Um, I could see a one lean fault code by 
bank on bank two, but it had banks one and two lien codes. Long-term field trim is at plus 22 and plus 14. So I should reset these field trims and, and let this run for a little while. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an open loop yet. Fuel staff. No, it's in closed loop already, so it's already gone to closed loop. So we'll let this run for a little while and reset the fuel trims and then go from there. So I'm looking at fuel data here. This thing is running in closed loop. And uh, short term and long term fuel trim numbers are positive. You see 20 and 21 percent. O2 sensors are switching properly. I don't see any obvious induction leak, but I'm going to try introducing some propane or acetylene around the intake manifold under control shafts to see if it's got a, a vacuum leak around there. I should also check the map sensor to see if it's skewed. Maybe we'll have a look at that before we do this. It's not in this data list, so I'm going to pause this recording. So I introduced some acetylene around the intake manifold runner control rods and there was no real response or change at all. So I don't think it's got an induction leak around there, but I'm going to go ahead and have a look at the map sensor to see if it's... It doesn't have a map sensor per se, it uses kind of a reverse speed density calculation to calculate atmospheric pressure. And if it calculates the wrong altitude, then it could be a, a dirty mass airflow sensor that's doing it. Uh, barrel 160. Yeah, that's actually, well, I, I've reset it because I cleared the code, so that reset it to 160. I should have looked at that bar prior to clearing the codes. Oh, well, I think we're going to give this back to the customer because the uh, problem that he was brought it in here for, which was the misfire, is corrected. And we'll see. It's probably just a little tired. We'll see how it runs. Take it for a road test. So I pulled the uh, mass airflow sensor off this thing. We're going to have a look at the air filter. But that little tiny wire that you can see down inside there below the screen is the either the that's probably the cold wire and then behind it is the hot wire uh, there could be some microscopic dust on that wire so we're going to clean it with some uh, combustion chamber cleaner or carburetor cleaner spray and blow it off gently and then uh, reinstall it and see if that affects the fuel trims at all so i cleaned the mass airflow sensor and made sure that the hose clamps were tight on it and i've reinstalled it Bank 2 seems to be coming down slightly. We're at 19 on bank 1 long term. We'll let this run for a couple of minutes and then see if it's changed at all. So that seems to have helped a little bit. You can see Long-term trim on bank one is down to 11, and bank two is down to nine, where it was like 18 and 22 before. So a little bit of dust on the mass airflow sensor may have skewed it slightly. We're gonna give it back to the customer and let him drive it.